Hood feminism is about survival because for those who are facing all of these issues from gun violence to housing, their first concern has to be staying alive long enough to fight for their rights. The movement has to do a better job of addressing displacement and hunger if it expects support for reproductive justice marches or for electing the first woman to be president of the United States. It's hard to believe that women will be better leaders when the feminist women you see gaining power not only don't help you, but are likely to actively participate in harming you. Feminism is the day-to-day -day work that low-income and working-class women in the inner city and rural areas do for themselves and their communities. It's the feminism that focuses on survival and solidarity in the places that are most often marginalized. Hood feminists are facing issues like gun violence, poverty, and housing instability. They can't lean into being a CEO when their hair, skin, gender presentation, and so on make them outsiders with minimal access to education and opportunity. It's important to talk about the obstacles they face because right now, mainstream feminist narratives are more likely to contribute to their oppression than to end it. If mainstream feminism is so focused on how to get to the top of the corporate ladder that it forgets those who are actually doing most of the work, then it is betraying the interests of the very women it claims to represent. When I said solidarity is for white women in 2013, I was addressing not only a single incident, but an ongoing pattern of erasing the concerns of poor women from most conversations in the feminist movement. That failure to address basic needs can be alienating, especially for young women of color, cis and trans, because if you can't see yourself in a movement, can't see your needs being addressed by it, then you're not only going to feel unsupported, you may start to feel that it is an attack on you. Part of resolving that problem is doing the hard work of centering those with the least and addressing their needs first. We can't expect anyone who is already struggling to survive to make time to defend rights they already lack. Whether that is by calling the police on you as gentrifiers or actively ignoring those who pose a threat to you, any feminism that acts in service to white supremacy, to transphobia, to other bigotry is one that can't be trusted. And if it can't be trusted, can't be invested in, and it is useless to most and likely to undermine even those it claims to serve. Even as we see some consequences playing out for serial predators in the wake of Me Too, there's still no shortage of victim blaming when the victims are perceived to be the wrong kind of victim. Instead of focusing on the culture that created a wave of tacit permission to prey on young women, we turn to those who have been harmed and ask why they didn't know better. We teach young women and girls that they need to do more to protect themselves, instead of teaching people not to be rapists. And for girls of color, especially black girls, we project an expectation onto them that they be better, smarter, and savvier than any adults that they might encounter. And then we punish them for failing to meet unreasonable standards. 